hello, hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jaylee's Corner. This is my review for Love at the Lockup Season 2, Episode 25, which I also feel like should be Season 3, Episode 2. But, I mean, the website keeps saying that it's Season 2. They did not call them this Season 3, so I can't, you know, say anything different, but we're going to do what it's going to do. If you have not done so already, please take a moment to subscribe to my channel and become a whole J girl. It's for it's four thirty a.m. I can't J bird J bird dun 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 and all that good shit. Do not forget to like this video. Hit that like button. Share this video. Hit the share button. Like it. Share it. Like it. Share it. You know, you can also hit the, the notification bell because that uh, that lets you know when I have new videos up. Um, follow me on IG, J underscore leaves underscore corner. Let's just get started. First up. We have Cheryl and Josh. Okay, Cheryl is still, you know, crazy for Josh, who looks like a crazy person as well. And so I'm like, girl, if you like it, I love it, but I don't really love it. So they have been together for two years, you know, even though Josh has been in jail for six years. And, you know, she's just eager to get with our man. So we see she's going to, as she says, she's going to move to Colorado. Yep, she's going to move to Colorado for three months to be with him because that is where he is being paroled to. And she's going to have her dad, her daddy, for those three months, watch her children. Yes, she's moving to Colorado for three months to be with a man she's never met. And she's leaving her kids with her father. Where is child protective service when you need them? Like, I don't, that should be like, didn't she like abandon them kids? I'm just, I, even though she left with her parents, I mean, I still feel like who leaves their kids for three months, not three weeks, not three days, three months. I said, girl, you ain't shit. Didn't you know that you ain't shit, girl? I, mm -mm. Anyway, she chose because her mom was on their way to the dress shop because she wants to get a wedding dress immediately because she can't wait to marry Josh, okay? And, you know, she rings up how, you know, he picked out our wedding ring and everything. No, technically you picked it. You know, she sent she sent him um choices to pick from. So from what she picked from, from what she liked, he picked the one that he liked. She then went and bought it. I said, girl... Her mom like, why you want to marry him? I'm like, what's going on? Mama, I love him, okay? He treats me so well. You know, no one treats me so nice. He treats me so nice. He's in prison. All he can do is talk to you nice. He can't He can't treat you no kind of way. He can just talk to you nice. Because if he doesn't talk nice, you can hang up on him. I'm girl, poor, poor baby. The mom like, you know, she has this whole fantasy of what's going to happen. Like, it's going to be this happy ever after. And I don't think that's going to happen. But when she... <clears throat> when it all falls apart, I will be there for her to pick up the pieces. Okay? All up and through. So, they go wedding dress shop. And the mom like, I don't I don't agree. I don't agree with none of this. But I'm going to come to support you because you're my daughter. And she tries on, like, two dresses. The mom like, that one's not... I don't like that one. That one's ugly. And the mama just not, I mean, she's just not here for it. The mama ain't holding her tongue. I mean, she's there. Her body is there. But she not, oh, my God, you look so beautiful. Oh, you look amazing. No, I don't like it. The dress looks puffy. I don't like it. The dress is ugly. And she called the dress that she picked ugly. I said, but, but you, picked the, you picked the dress, mama. Anyway, Ma, why are you so against this? Because he's in jail, daughter. Because he's in jail. She then say, did your father like who you married? He said, well, I don't, I don't know, but your daddy wasn't in jail. <laughs> I say, Lord Jesus, your daddy wasn't in prison, so it doesn't matter, okay? I mean, he may not have liked her father, but it wasn't because his father, his father was in prison. So, we see she's at home with her kids, and she's leaving them for three months to go to Colorado to be with Josh. You know what I'm saying? And the dad, like, you know what I'm saying? I don't support her, that that boyfriend of hers. I am watching the kids because they was my these my grandkids. She my daughter and I want to support her. Not him. But in supporting her, you supporting him because she is going to him. She wouldn't be able to go to him if you didn't watch the children. 
again, they've been dating for two years. He was sentenced to 12 years, but he only did six. I just, ugh, prison math makes my head hurt on all day. So we just see her drive into him, and we'll see what happens next episode when she gets there. Okay, next up we have Andrea and LaMondre. I really feel like Andrea only came on the show to promote her sunglasses, okay? I, I, I really, really do. Um, but she's smart. I'm going to say that. I'm not going to say she's only dating him so that she can go on the show and show off her sunglasses, but I will say that she is very much so smart to be like, I'm going to keep talking about my sunglasses and say the website so that people can go to my website and buy them. I haven't went to a website because, as I said last week, she was arrested for some different things on her own, and I don't want no stolen glasses, okay? But either way it goes, Andrea and Lamandre up in these streets supposed to be together, okay? Even though... It's some foolishness involved. So she brings up how LaMondre doesn't like when she does photo shoots with body paint. He don't like that because he's conservative. He's old-fashioned, okay? But she's going with her sister, who's also her manager, to <laughs> to a photo shoot where she's doing what? Mm-hmm. Body paint a photo shoot for her sunglasses, as she says, because the last time that she did a photo shoot with the body paint well her sunglasses is sold a lot people all people came to her website and i say why why do you why can't you pay somebody to be painted and have i get how he don't want her to do it but you ain't got no damn friend who or a model you can give a hundred bucks to to stand there for what an hour and take some photos okay but i get it you don't want to waste the money on no model keep the money for yourself and do it yourself i get that but if your man has an issue with you being basically naked with paint covering your nipples why not try to kill two birds with one stone make him happy and still get your photo shoot by what okay if you don't want me to do this you've been funding my lifestyle send me some money to pay a model to do it that's what i would have done but I digress. Anyway, the sister like I don't like. I don't want my sister changing. I don't want you know what I'm saying. He shouldn't be able to rule her. He should tell her what she can do. Da, 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 da. Every couple, every couple has things that their person doesn't like them doing, and you have to respect that. If if y'all have a conversation about it, and you say, Hey, babe, I want to do this. I want to be basically naked, but it's gonna be some body paint stuff. Ah, uh, no, I don't like that. I don't, I don't want. I don't want you doing that. You can you can have somebody else do, but I don't want you posing that way. I don't see an issue with that. Now, how the conversation went later on was completely different. Anyway, they going down, and again, LaMondre don't know what's going on. But her sister, who's also a manager, doesn't like the fact that LaMondre seems to be trying to control her sister, even though the sister is older than him. Okay, she's his elder. Okay, but she said the sister is being controlled by what LaMondre don't want her doing. Okay, he called her while she there, and she has to answer the phone. Okay, why? Because if she don't answer the phone, what's going to happen? I mean, he's going to call her back. So she answered the phone, and they talking to her. Like, yeah, I tried to call you earlier, and I guess I didn't get through. Oh, yeah. Well, you know what? I don't want to lie to you. What, but you've been lying. If you planned the photo shoot and didn't tell him, wasn't you already lying? Okay. Anyway, she said, I don't want to lie to you, so I'm going to tell you the truth of what I'm doing. I'm at... A photo shoot doing body a body paint shoot and he gets real quiet like he i'm like did he hang up was he that upset i'm saying he then say we talked about it we talked about it i told you i didn't like it and now you're going against me and lying to me and doing it anyway you know what i'm saying you disloyal you're going against me now he put 20 on 10 he put 20 on 10 he could have just left it at we talked about that i told you i didn't like it and you and you said you wouldn't do it so why are you doing it that would have been simple enough, but no. He had to go into you being disloyal and you you going against me. And I'm looking like, first of all, I would say, son, calm down, little boy. Calm down, okay? Don't don't disrespect your elders, is what I would have said. Um, and she's like, you know, what is you talking about? Oh, my God, you is crazy. You is crazy. You know what I'm saying? I can't believe this. She then says something to the effect of, because of how you act, because of how you want things, I have to lie to you. You can't say that. Because <laughs> if you, you, you can't. You can't make a reason to lie to your spouse, um, even if, or, or well, your, 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 your other person, 
even if it's because they don't want you doing things. You have to have a conversation about that. And if y'all are having conversations about things and everything you, he wants, everything that you want to do, he don't want you doing it, then y'all shouldn't be together. Or he may be right. I don't see an issue with body paint. I, I think it's fine or whatever. But I get if a man don't want a woman doing that. But, I, girl, because she say he is old-fashioned. He like his girls dressed up and, you know, don't want them all naked and stuff. He don't want nobody out here with their body showing. Like, he don't like none of that. And I said, but when did he become old-fashioned? He only 33. He been locked up for 10 years. Who He, he was an old-fashioned 20-year-old. If you say so, I guess he got an old fashioned in prison. Because in prison, everybody covered up. So they argued back and forth or whatever. I, it was too much back and forth. I wasn't really listening to it too much. And then, you know what I'm saying? The phone hangs up some kind of way. And then she, like, you know, I had like 22 missed calls in four minutes. I say, hey, how he call you that many times in four minutes? I'm like, is there no one else at the prison? Usually at a prison to make phone calls. Like, don't they have like a phone that they have to like wait on? And don't like don't somebody else be next in line? Like how he make twenty? How did he make twenty two phone calls in four minutes? That's a, ain't that impossible to to dial the number, wait for the the operator to say, you know, you have a call from so and so who's at a so and so prison. This call will be recorded. Oh my like, girl, his fingers must hurt dialing that damn fast. So he calls her back, and she do end up talking up to him or whatever. And we do see him say, him you know saying, you post some pictures, you gonna live a nightmare. I'm looking like. Bro, what? But he gets out in a week. <sighs> he like, you know, bitch, if you want if you want me to go with you, I can't. I'm like, oh, who you talking to, sir? He was rude. He was completely rude. Completely rude. And now I'm like, mm-mm. Not me. Not, not on my watch. But she, you, it seemed like she wasn't shocked by it. Anyway, she up there in body paint. And her shades and that bad blonde wig arguing with a prisoner. I would never. I would never. I'm not arguing with no prisoner. Even when the bad guy was like that, we did not have no arguments. Why? Because I'm not arguing with the prisoner. Not gonna happen. But she did for a little bit of a time and then she did a photo shoot. Girl. Plum D. Plum D. Plum D food and body paint. Okay, so next up we have Angela and Tony. Girl, Angela been on here since season one waiting for Tony. Girl, it was <laughs> she been waiting a long time, okay? A long time. Because he's been in jail for four years. However, let me fix this picture. Um, girl, do it right. So, again, he, he's been in jail for four years. Now, she wait at the bus stop, okay? Now, this is the time he's supposed to get out. The second time. Now, the first time was eight months ago. Because eight months ago, she went down to the bus station to wait for him. And he didn't get out then. Mm -mm. He didn't get out then. So, he's been in jail for four years. And she says how they were talking for only three months when they got engaged. And I said, girl, if you say so. So, you know, Ashley out there and she just, you know, she her walking boots, okay? I'm looking like, what did you wear? She don't look bad, but I'm like, that. I mean, I guess that's what she wear to get your man out of jail. And I'm like, these boots are made for walking. That's just what they'll do. But it's funny to me because the production or the camera people is petty as hell because they got a picture of her boots, not me, them, okay? I'm like, why y'all do a close-up of her boots? What y'all do that for? And Jay Lee, I'm petty. I watched that my own name as if I didn't know what I was talking about. But I mean, they was petty because they showed the picture. I'm petty because I got a screenshot of it. And I'm looking like, I mean, her boots are made for walking. She's been walking in them. Ain't nothing wrong with that. So, again, she outside waiting on Tony to get there. You know what I'm saying? Um, what else did you talk about? He talks about sex a lot or whatever. So, she said she, I assume that he's going to want to get right to sex as soon as he gets out. So, some car pull up and she thought it was them and it wasn't them or whatnot. And then she's just waiting, 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 waiting. And then he gets out. So, Tony is finally out. Okay, after all this time. Um... It's crazy, but they, I mean, it was, they got out there, was hugging, a lot of nasty kissing. 
out of open mouth, nasty kiss. And I'm looking like, oh my God, it's just so nasty. You know, he says how he's happy to be home and he's happy to be out with Angela. You know, he has to go to a halfway house first. He cannot be paroled to her house. So she bought him some clothes so he would have some his own, you know, something of his own. Um, besides, you know, the clothes he came home in prison in. Now, they in the car, and he changed into that black shirt he wearing right now because she, you know, gave... What, wait, did she? Yeah. Because he put on a black shirt in the car. So, maybe not. Maybe it was a, di a different black shirt. But, you know, they in the car or whatever, and, and she's like, oh, you going to take your shirt off he's like no nah, i'm gonna leave my undershirt on like i'll i don't want to do that i'll wait till i you know get in the gym a little bit before i you know what i'm saying come all out with my body but she, i just want to touch you because she's touching on all on his chest you know what i'm saying touch them all over his body and he's like yeah we got time for that we got time for that okay I, i've got four years of of, of non-sex all built up in me i said come on now you Oh, Lord. But she she wants to get down in the car. And he like, I want sex, too. Like, we're we going to do it. We're we going we gonna to do this. Eh, eh, eh. And I'm like, all right. So they drive off or whatever. But she's like, no, I love you. He said, all right. <laughs> he out of jail and already not saying I love you back. So she do bring... When he brings up how he's wearing the ring that she bought him, a, a wedding band. It was his engagement ring that she sent him in prison. So he said he was wearing it, and then they pull off. And she then says, so do you want steak first or a blowjob? And he says, a steak. I, you know what? People are like, oh, you don't want a vagina? I feel like he may think I, I have time to get vagina, but I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I can eat some food. Then they, Well, no, nah, you shouldn't eat food and then get a blowjob. Not right after. Girl. <laughs> anyway. So, you know, they ride off into the sunset. So we're going to see what happens with them within the next episode. Um, Next up, a new couple. We have Lizzie and Daniel. Okay. Lizzie is only 22. Daniel is only 24. You know, he's been, you know, locked away for two years. Okay. He has some uh some pharmaceuticals on his, on his person. And that's how he's locked up. Now, they have, in my opinion... A crazy story, okay? It's a story made in, in, in white people. Just, I don't know. Because I'm like, I mean, it's just, it's team so much. So, Lizzie brings up how she's a full-time student. And she also has a, a, a job. She worked at the gas station. And then she brings up how she's a former drug addict who used to do, she was addicted to pills, okay? Since middle school. Because, again, she's only 22. So, she brings out her boyfriends back in the day, the couple that she had. One of them got her smoking weed and drinking. You know, the other one's got her popping pills and dealing drugs. I said, she, in middle school? Girl, what kind of white trailer truck? Girl, Lord Jesus. But, she like, now she lives a clean life, okay? Currently, she lives a clean life. And she's happy about that because she got shit together. I said, well, that's good. That is good, Lizzie. So, we then see Dan Daniel was getting released tomorrow, and she brings up how he is the love of her life. I said, oh, how long y'all been dating? How long has it been? Okay, she says a week and a half after they met, he got arrested and went to prison. That was three years ago. And, girl, girl, you met that man, and he, he went to jail a week and a half later. I would have never seen him again. Okay, he would have been a figment of my imagination. But not her. Nope, that's the love of his life. So, you know, so that means at that time, she was 19 and he was 21. I'm like, mm, mm, mm. So we then see he's in jail getting a haircut, okay? And he looked like Steve from Family Guy when his hair was flipped up that one time, but I couldn't find the proper picture for that, but I see that's weird. That's what he reminds me of. Anyway, so he brings up how he met. Well, first of all, he said he, he he was doing drugs. He used to do drugs, meth. He says he learned the ghetto way to do it. He said something about a, a light bulb and tossing something in it. And I'm like, I don't know what any of that means. I feel like when a light bulb breaks, you throw it away. That's all I know about light bulbs. Anyway, you know, he said he met Lizzie while he was working at a drive through and she came to the drive through and she had on a swim a teal swimsuit and that's the same color and he said, Hey, what's up? And she said, you know, I want your number. And it was on the pop up for then for a week and a half. So I'm like, girl, um, 
She then, oh, we have two Lizzie's. Sisters. No, the other girl's name was Lacey. Thought about that. Anyway, she brings up the last time that she saw him was the wrong time he was arrested. She said we was partying and was drunk at the house, at my house. The police raided my house because my, my, my roommates at the time were drug dealers. And they were, it were drugs in the house. They found drugs in the house. She also got arrested, but it was like a because you was there charged, not because you were doing the charge or whatever. So she's fine. And then he said he ran and got away. However, he ran, got away, did some drugs, and got locked up and went to jail. Anyway, Lizzie has never went to go see him. And she said, because I can't take time off work because that's money out of my pocket. And I can't afford to take time off school because when I do that, I get, I get behind. And so I have to stay focused. Well, she's smart in that. I mean, I don't... I, I get that. He brings up, you know, I know she hasn't visited me or whatever. I try not to get mad about it, so it's fine. I'm like, something about this ain't going to be right. They also never had sex, which is good. That's good that y'all dated for a week and a half and did not have sex. I mean, that's, you know. So Lizzie and Daniel's mom are going to drive to go get him. However, Lizzie and Daniel's mom don't really get along because she says his mom wants to control his life. And she has plans for him when he gets out. And she doesn't want anybody else, like, Messing with her plans are for his son. Um, that's not who I would ride to go get him with. I would just ride by myself. I really, I, I, it's going to be some contention there. And I'm like, it was for the cameras. You know, so her sister is there too. I'm like, how do you know, you know, that he's going to really like come out and be clean or whatever? You know what I'm saying? What if he like, it's like all your other exes? What do you, what do you mean? The sister says how her, the sister says how Lizzie has always dated dudes who were like, worthless they were either worthless and like no bad people or they were still bad people but they at least they like sold drugs so she's only did you know they didn't the two people and so the sister like what if he's the same what if he gets out and gets you back involved and what you back strung out or whatever or back dealing or whatever like what if he does that why would i do that i'm clean like why would i do that because it happens and for you to not even acknowledge that it that he may not stay clean when he gets out and childish you know what I'm saying and so we then see he calls her on the phone or whatever and then she tells him how her sister just said like what if you you know lead me down the path of destruction what does she know fuck what everybody thinks uh, why judge me because they don't know you bro they don't know you she has not seen you in almost well, in three years okay and even before that she only knew, knew you for a week and a half just stupid children. You know what I'm saying? I just, I feel like this is going to be, you know, like a teen mom, 16 and pregnant type of shit with them too. And I'm just not here for it just yet. We're going to see what happens with them. Okay. I hope they both stay clean. I do. I hope they both stay clean, but I don't know. I don't know. And then we have Lacey, John, and Jane. Okay. The threesome, threesome. And I was looking like, why does Shane's mugshot look like that? I'm like, it's very confusing. Why does it look like that? Okay, now Lacey's on her way to pick up Shane, who she met four months ago. It's a seven-hour drive, okay? And her fiancé, he gets out in a day. Her fiancé, John, gets out in a few weeks. And John plans on paroling to Lacey's house, even though Lacey is going right now to pick up Shane, who lives seven hours away. I'm like, this is the craziest shit I've ever seen in life. So as she's driving, she brings up how Shane, wait, no, as she's calling, John is calling. As she's driving, John is calling her, but she's ignoring his calls. You know, she brings up how she got bored at home. She was engaged to John. You know, John is locked up. So she reached out on the little website thing, and she met Shane, and they were just kicking it since then, or whatever. But she felt like she may be off her head, you know. She, you know, she maybe she moved too fast. She says that she says her and Shane have discussed marriage, even though she's engaged currently to John. And I'm talking with the picture up so y'all can remember what I'm who, who I'm talking about because it's three people. So, um, she also brings up how, you know, we need to slow down or whatever because, you know, I may not be able to marry him. You can't because you're engaged to someone else. Um, but she also brings up how she hopes he isn't lying with what he looks like because she's only seen 
the pictures he sent her. And she's never went to visit him in person, and they've never video chatted in the prison either. I said, oh, so that's probably why Shane's picture looks like that, because we don't know if that's really who Shane is. Mm -hmm. I feel like he's not who he says he is, and that's why his picture looks like that. Because I'm like, his face looks just weird. Okay, so now that I said that, I'll take this thing off. Um, because I'm tired of looking at their faces. Anyway, <laughs> so we just have um, Lacey up here right now. So she was driving, 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 and it started pouring down rain. I'm like, that's a bad sign right there. You can't be doing that, okay? It's just seen too much. So she has to pull over because it's raining really, really bad. And so when she pulls over, well, first she got a call from Shane, who's like, how he just can't wait to see her. I mean, Shane sounds cute, but who knows what he looks like in person. So that call ends or whatever. And then when she's parked, she answers John's call. I'm like, how does she know the difference between, where? or well, they're probably in two different states. That's why. Two different phone numbers. Anyway, when she answers John call, he's like, oh, so is it raining there? You can hear it pouring down rain. Yeah, I was out, you know, hanging out or whatever. I was riding around shopping and I have these bags. So I don't want to, I don't want to get wet because it's raining so bad. So I'm in my car waiting to go in the house um, with these bags. So she's lying to him basically. And then he's like, oh, yes, you know, the, you have someone watching the kids or whatever. She's like, yeah, but, you know, it's for a couple hours or whatever. Oh, so you're not going for the whole weekend? She's like, no, what are you, what are you talking about or whatever? She says she feels like he knows something is up. I mean, even though he's in prison, people in prison get word about things, so we shall see. So they chit out a little bit of a minute or whatever, and she's like, I'm so tired of lying to him. It's just so hard. But she then says, all right, I'm going to get off the phone now. You know, just kind of wait for the rain tonight. I'm looking like... Who gets off the phone with a prisoner? Do you wait for the phone call to end? I'm like, Lord. And then she said, all right, have a good evening. I said, have a good evening? Who's that, the butler? Girl, crazy much and foolishness all up and through. So she gets to the place, stays at the hotel overnight because he doesn't get out in the morning. The boyfriend, not the fiance. And then she goes down to the prison because he's supposed to get out in the morning. She says, Shane told me that him and another inmate is getting out. She's like, so how do, I hope I don't get confused because what the inmate looks like him and I don't know if it's him. You know, so I hope I don't hug the wrong guy. And I'm like, oh my God, Lord Jesus. Um, and then she's waiting outside in the cold and the rain and flip-flops. Some little flip-flops. I say, Jesus fix these people. I, I, not me, not today, not on my watch. As I say, not on my watch. I'm not waiting in the rain and flip-flops for no prisoner. It's just not going to happen. Not, mm -mm. And last but not least, we have Vincent and Amber. Okay. <sighs> These two. I just can feel the uncomfortableness in the air between them. I just can't take it. Just can't take it. Okay. So, again, Vincent and Amber have separate photos of these two. Uh, she's out. Okay, now Amber says how Vince is handsome. He's very handsome. She said, but he seems more shy than he seen than he was over the phone. Because some people it's easy to be big, bad, and bold or whatever on the phone because it's not in person. Okay, it's not in person. I think that he may seem kind of shy because she seemed like she may not have been too happy to see him. Like she didn't like when they it, it was so awkward. It was so awkward. So I feel like he probably just like, what we gonna what we gonna do here? What's gonna happen? So they're driving because Amber is going to stay with her prison wife Puppy's mom. So Puppy calls them because Puppy's still in jail. Puppy ain't out yet, but Puppy mom live in that state because the prisoners can only parole to the state they're in. You know, the prisoners can only parole to stay where the prison is. So he lives he. He lives in a different state. Like, she can't parole to his house. Um, so, she has to parole. Luckily, Puppy's mom, where she at? Puppy's mom lives there. And so, she can parole to Puppy's mom's house. That's Puppy's mom. And so, when Puppy calls, I'm like, hey, wife, I miss you. I love you, wife. I'm like, y'all are a little bit too loose, loose with the wife, wife. Okay? And so, I'm like, oh, it's some bullshit afoot. Now, both, well... 
Amber says her and Puppy have never been together. Like, they've never scissored a trip together. Which is when they haven't ever had sex. Um, but they love each other. You know, they kiss or whatever. They would lay in bed together. But, and they became really, really close. They were prison wives. Okay, prison wives. Anyway, you know, they get to Puppy's mom's house. Amber has never met Puppy's mom. So she's literally going to stay with a stranger. Because she met the stranger's daughter in prison. But she also met Vincent in prison. Her mom's in prison, too. So, girl, I just said, Amber don't have a good thing. Girl, Puppy Mom, like, you know, okay, you know, this is your room or whatever. She brings up how much Amber and Puppy say how much they love each other and how much, how no one can come between them and how close they are or whatever. And I've never heard, you know, Amber say that about Vincent. I'm like, but do you know Amber? Do you and Amber, why, why would you and Amber sit and talk about Vincent? Calm down, Mama. Anyway, but she do make it clear to Vincent that he can't stay at her house. I'm not running a hotel now. You can't stay here. Oh, it's okay. I know that. It's, it's fine. Because he probably has a hotel room somewhere else. Um, So, we do see her and Vincent leave. And she said that she'll be back tomorrow. And they're going like, to a hotel. She says, you know, me and Vincent talked about getting married or whatever. And, you know, we talked about the first time we'll be together sexually. But I don't want thinking that, you know... As soon as I get out, like, he's gonna, gonna get it. And I feel like we need to be around each other more before I, you know, give it up. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to give it the goose for no reason. And I'm my girl. And the mama then say to Amber before she left, don't you do anything that you don't want to do. And I'm like, I mean, that's true. But, girl, the foolishness of it all. So, that was the whole episode. I mean... This season so far isn't as interesting as the last seasons, but it's only two episodes in, so we shall see. It's still foolishness in soon, but I'm still like, where is this foolishness going? Because it can go either way, but we shall see. Anyway, I am done. I'm going to bed. Till tomorrow, y'all.